Do you struggle to find the perfect fitting dress shirt? Maybe you've opted for the shirts that are actually labeled slim fit only to find that while they do fit really nice around the stomach and the waist, they're way too tight in the shoulders, they're way too tight in your upper arms. And when you're just standing there all normal, you find that the placket just pulls like crazy the way that this one is doing right now. Then maybe you go back to the classic fit and you're so much more happy with the way that it fits in your shoulders and your upper arms and your chest area. You don't see any pulling from the fabric. And maybe you just figure you'll tuck the excess fabric around the waist in the back only to find that later on in the day, you've got some serious muffin top going on. Well, this is actually something that I struggled with many, many years ago when I started to buy dress shirts that I wanted to fit a certain way. And if this is something that you struggle with, this video today is definitely going to help you buy the perfect fitting dress shirt. Welcome to Essential Style. Let's get right into it. All right, when talking about dress shirts, dress shirts have to fit in a couple of areas. Number one, they have to fit in the shoulder right here. That shoulder seam should be right up here. It should not be all the way up here. That means the shirt is too small, the shirt's too tight. It also should not be all the way down here. We don't wanna look like Ross from Friends wearing that red sweater where his shoulder seams were all the way down here. That means that the shirt is too big. The collar, you should be able to button the collar comfortably and fit at least two if not three fingers in between your neck and the collar when it is closed. This is up to you how tight or loose you want the collar, but you don't want the collar to be choking you because sometimes with this dress shirt, you actually are going to be wearing a tie with it and it's only going to make it more uncomfortable if you're having a really hard time closing that collar. Not to mention when you wear that collar open, like I almost always do, you don't want it to be too big because it's just gonna be hanging down. And if it's too small, it's just gonna look a little bit weird. You can just tell when a collar doesn't fit properly. So you wanna get that collar as close to perfect as possible. Sleeve length, as you could see, I have my sleeves rolled up. I will roll them down to demonstrate this. Now with the sleeves all the way rolled down, when you actually just stand there like this, you don't want them to be way too big. You don't want them to be covering half your hand. You also don't want them to be a little bit short as well. And when you're wearing a suit jacket or sweater, normally you're going to be wearing a collared dress shirt underneath this. And you do want that dress shirt cuffs, the sleeve cuffs to show underneath your suit jacket or sport coat. So put your hands down here, your sleeve should be covering this bone right here on your wrist. Not too long, not too short. One thing that I was taught from a very young age is put your hands out like that. You should not see the sleeves start to come up like that. If you put your hand out like that and the shirt comes a little bit too short or it gets shorter, more than likely those sleeves are going to be a little bit short, which means that it's not going to look quite right when you wear it underneath a sport coat or a suit jacket. Now still speaking of the sleeves, you don't want your sleeves to be too tight or too loose, but specifically too tight because if they are too tight, you're going to have a hard time rolling up the sleeves and staying comfortable in them. The sleeves on this shirt actually fit me perfectly. You can see I've got a little bit of extra fabric. It also helps that this shirt has some stretch in it, but I can comfortably do that double roll that you just saw me do. I don't have any discomfort in my sleeves since there is enough room for my arms to actually move around in. Length of the shirt. There is a trend in recent years that is untucked your dress shirts. Dress shirt should never be untucked. You should always be tucking shirts in, especially if you're wearing them with a suit, sport coat, or sweater. But if you want to wear that dress shirt casually, you have to make sure that it's not too long. However, dress shirts are designed to be tucked in, so you do want there to be enough length where it's not just going to come flying out of your pants if you actually go ahead and reach up to a imaginary shelf that's up in that corner over there. So for me, you could see here is my belt and here is my shirt. It has a decent, a decent two or three inches that it comes down, which is pretty decent and it definitely does help keeping the shirt tucked in all day. So that's all the areas that the dress shirt should fit off the rack. You really can't do much to have a tailor actually bring that in or take that out. The collar is too small, for example. They can't lengthen the collar. They can't make the material more and they can't lengthen the sleeves either. Now we get to the waist. Now this is a J. Crew classic fit shirt because the slim fit was a bit too tight for me for J. Crew. But you can see it's not too big and billowy. I do wish that it was a bit slimmer. Maybe if it was like that, it would definitely look a lot better if I just bunch it up in the back, you could see. But if I actually stepped up to the slim fit shirt, 
then I would have a lot of restriction in the shoulders, in the chest, in the arms. This would not be a very comfortable thing for me to wear. So you wanna have a little bit of extra fabric around here, but not too much though. Now for a dress shirt that you're tucking in all the time, you don't have to go super slim over here. It is a lot more important to get the things we just talked about, collar, shoulders, sleeve length, and length of the shirt as close to perfect as possible. And then what you can do is you could actually just tuck it in and tuck the excess fabric in the back, which I'll show you in a second, also known as a military tuck. Now, as you can see, I'm wearing the same shirt and I didn't do the military tuck and I just simulated if the shirt became untucked over here a little bit, but the shirt is still tucked in. But if we actually just pushed all of that excess fabric towards the back, you can see just how much better that makes the shirt look. It looks like a much more slim fit than a baggier fit like it actually is or a classic fit. So I'd always recommend buying a classic fit and paying attention to the other areas of the shirt and then just tucking it all the way into the back because now you're going to get that slim look but the shirt's not going to be too restrictive and uncomfortable over here. You're actually gonna be able to move in it. Something else you should be looking at is a lot of shirts nowadays come in stretch fabric actually my pants come in stretch fabric too. Stretch fabric is awesome. That means that if you were to do jumping jacks, let's do some jumping jacks, the shirt's not coming untucked. Let's go ahead and let's do some squats. The shirt's not coming untucked at all. Check that out. Because when you go like that, now that fabric has some give in it. Whereas before shirts actually had stretch in them, or before I actually started to wear shirts in stretch, what I found was anytime I reached my hands all the way up to grab something off of a shelf, it, I would constantly have to just keep retucking my shirt in, and it was just not a good thing. It was just very, very aggravating. Now, other things that you can do to help keep your shirt tucked in is if you are wearing a V-neck undershirt like I am, tuck that into your underwear. That way it's going to stay tucked in a lot more, and then you're not going to have to retuck that one in. It's going to be a lot less fabric bagging underneath the actual dress shirt. And you're going to want to wear pants like chinos and wear pants that actually have a higher rise. These are Banana Republic Slim Fit chinos and they are just about up to my belly button. There's like maybe an inch from my belly button. These would still be considered low rise from some really old standards. However, wearing pants that actually have a higher rise is going to make a big difference in the way that your shirt actually stays tucked in all day. Also, it's totally okay to just go ahead and make sure that you adjust your shirt every once in a while. If you're moving around a lot, you're probably gonna have to readjust it every 10 or so minutes. And if you're actually in a situation where your shirt's constantly coming untucked, what I would personally do is just leave it untucked until I was done crawling on the floor, building it, whatever it is you're building, whatever type of job you have where you're wearing a dress shirt and you're actually moving around a whole lot. I mentioned before, this is the classic fit dress shirt. This is their J. Crew. J. Crew is, I think, Bowery fit. It's a bit baggy, but I would say this shirt fits me pretty close to as perfect as possible. I may actually take a sewing machine and maybe take a half an inch in on the side, but I really don't feel the need to do that because if I am going to wear a shirt untucked like this, I just have other options like my Oxfords, flannels, and polos anyway. But since the shirt's actually not longer than where the inseam starts, you could still do it if you want to. Now here's an example of a dress shirt that's actually a slim fit from Banana Republic. And you could see there really is no excess fabric around the waist. It's not really pulling around the waist. But once we get to up over here, unless I stand in a certain way, if I stand normally, I do get some pulling in the fabric, especially if I button this button up here, forget about it. You could see this shirt is actually a bit too tight for me and I could even feel it. As soon as I go like this, I can feel it gets tight around the back. It gets tight in the shoulders, it still fits in the shoulders. It still fits in the collar. So this shirt is still okay. I keep this shirt as a spare, but this one is just a bit too tight for me to wear. Now I normally wear this one. This is the J. Crew classic fit, but these are the only two white dress shirts that I have. I also have a button down dress shirt right here, which I don't like wearing ties with button down collars. So this is my main dress shirt. It's the J. Crew Classic Fit, the one that you saw me just wear the light blue one. It fits exactly the same, it fits perfectly. This is more of like my spare dress shirt, just in case I'm laundering this one or I ruin it. Then this one I actually fall back on, just because I haven't gotten around to actually replacing it. And if I actually throw a tie on with this one, you wouldn't be able to see that the placket is pulling apart like that. Now here's the light blue Oxford shirt. This is the baggiest 
dress shirt that I have. Actually, Oxford shirts are much more casual than dress shirts, but I still wear this one a whole lot. This one definitely is a little bit baggier than all the dress shirts. You could see it's just got a lot of fabric here. I can still utilize the military tuck when I do tuck this one in, so it's no problem at all for me. And this one does have a little bit of stretch, and the Oxford shirt is a bit warmer when it's a bit colder outside. So I really do wear the light blue Oxford shirts a lot. If you see my other videos, you probably noticed that I wear this shirt quite a bit. I have more than one just because I just find it easy to wear. Now I used to have this shirt in slim fit and it actually fit really nicely. Then J. Crew went ahead and updated their slim fit to the point where it was just way too tight up in the chest, shoulders, and arms, and I couldn't wear it comfortably. So I decided just to get the classic fit and deal with the excess fabric over here. And since this is a more casual shirt, I don't have a problem with this either. Now I'm always wearing this one untucked anyway. You don't want to go too tight with a shirt that's untucked because then when it falls over your pants. It's just going to look really weird. It's going to start to bunch down. The plaque is going to start to bunch down when it gets down to about your belt line. So you don't want to go extreme slim fit if you're constantly going to be leaving the shirt untucked. Now here is a button down collar gingham dress shirt from J. Crew, And this is actually their slim fit. And I found that I don't know what it was out of all the other slim fit dress shirts I had to get rid of. This one I kept just because this is pretty much the perfect dress shirt. This is even more perfect than the J. Crew classic shirts I showed you before. But this one you could see barely any fabric on the side. However, if we get up close, take a look at that placket. If, even if I button the top over here, boom, that placket doesn't pull at all. The sleeves, I've got plenty of room. I can button the collar, no problem. Not that I would be doing that. I wouldn't be wearing a tie with a button down collar anyway, but this shirt actually fits me perfectly, which is the reason why when I switched to all classic fit shirts, when J. Crew and Banana Republic actually changed their fits because that's what retailers like to do to us, then this is actually a shirt for some reason that I kept. So where does that leave you? Should you go with a super slim fit shirt or should you just deal with the classic fit shirt? But like I was saying in the beginning of the video, pay attention to the collar, pay attention to the shoulders, pay attention to how much room is in the chest, how much room is in the sleeves, and the length of the sleeves. That way the shirt's actually comfortable. And then you can utilize things like the military tuck if you are going to tuck the shirt in. And a lot of times if you go to J. Crew or Banana Republic, their classic fit shirts actually is more of like a slimmer fitting shirt. And then their slim fit is more of like an extreme fit shirt. Now they used to have three types of fits. They had classic, fitted, and extreme slim. For some reason they got rid of one of them and now they just have classic and slim. And then some of us like me just fell right in the middle and then this is what we got to deal with. But there is one more thing you can do. You can take your shirts to the tailor and the tailor can actually go ahead and slim down the shirt where it needs to be while still leaving it super comfortable up top. But that can get pretty pricey pretty quickly. In the New York City area to slim down the sides of the shirt is going to be anywhere from 35 to 40 or sometimes even $50 just because it's New York and because they can. Now, a lot of times you're going to be spending at least 30 or $40 for a dress shirt at least. So now you're talking your 30 or $40 dress shirt is going to have another $30 fee on top of it, doubling the cost of it. And you're probably going to want a lot more than just one of your shirts tailored. So you could do what I did and invest in one of the sewing machines. I got this one from Amazon. I think I paid about between $100 and $200. Yes, it is a lot more expensive than just taking one of these shirts, one of my Oxford shirts, over to the tailor. But you know what? Once I actually learn how to do it, this is going to pay for itself because all you got to do is pay for those little what do they call threads, <laughs> right? The, the thread spools, pay for that. And those are going to be pennies on the dollar compared to actually taking your shirts and bringing them all to the tailor. Imagine if you got 10 dress shirts or 10 casual shirts that you actually want to get slimmed down, that's three or $400 versus just paying a hundred to $200 a one-time fee, and then actually just going ahead. And now you can do it to any of your shirts. I'm always a proponent in trying to learn how to do things yourself. That way you don't constantly have to pay an ongoing fee when you want something to be done. So dress shirts, although it can be tough to find a really good fitting dress shirt. Now that you watch this video, you should have a much easier time finding the perfect fitting dress shirt. So if you enjoyed this video, there's going to be another video that pops up right there. I think you're going to like this one. Also, I got a playlist that's going to pop up right now. It's got a bunch of other videos just like the one you just watched. Don't forget to hit that little circle guy up there. And then remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video out. That being said, I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.